So apparently half of registered voters decided to sit out the election last week, including the majority of those protesting its outcome across the nation. But the award for biggest hypocrite has to go to San Francisco 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick, whose protest against the national anthem has probably been the second biggest story of 2016. Well, the social justice warrior and winless quarterback made headlines again for not voting, but now, as it turns out, he wasn't even registered. Now, voting is more than a cornerstone right of this country. It's a responsibility of each citizen. You know, going back to 1956 on Election Day, my grandmother was one of a half a dozen blacks who insisted on voting in a small town near Selma, Alabama. Despite threats of physical reprisal and, and intimidation, uh, a brave group of them were placed in a small room, and they, they began to get very afraid. They waited for close to about an hour, and finally the room door opened, and a young man walked in. It was Martin Luther King, Jr. He told them not to be afraid, and they cast their votes that day. You know, the howls of victimization, fake outrage, and ugly rioting only chip away at hard-fought sacrifices of past Americans instead of actually building on them. So Election Day, everyone has the same power. It's a dignified voice that should never be muzzled or squandered. Joining me now to discuss, Ebony Williams and Tammy Bruce. All right, Ebony, I'll start with you, your boy Colin Kaepernick. Why it got to be my boy? I'm sorry. He's not but, even my quarterback. But it really is. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, you know, I mean, first of all, I think he picked the wrong way to protest. And then the idea that he's not even a registered voter just is it's, it's crazy. Charles, first of all, thank you for sharing that beautiful personal story. Um, I have family members that went through similar things. So it's called a protest vote for a reason. You know, the operative word there is vote. I'm someone that believes in the right to a protest vote, both as a lawyer and a black American. I don't think you have to accept scraps from the table if you are dissatisfied from the candidates that you have at your disposal. You have options of third party and write-in candidacy. But when Colin Kaepernick says he's not even registered, it tells me, Charles and Tammy, he's not serious about even leveraging what the political voice he has uh, e even represents. And that's something I cannot excuse. Tammy, I don't think mm -hmm. it, um, the majority of these so-called social justice warriors uh, are, are serious about what they're they, I don't even know if they know what the hell they're doing but they're throwing bricks through windows they're intimidating people and 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 they're, and they're making a fool of themselves well, look in the case of these uh, riots that are going on around the country these are not natural organic events anyway uh, we have ads in Craigslist $15 an hour uh, we've seen this happening funded by George Soros and other left-wing um, uh, aligned entities so it's not surprising to see that these are individuals who are just uh, there as opportunists but uh, I think the Copernic situation is a good example of how we have a generation that feels entitled to everything that exists, that it's here anyway, that they don't need to, to participate, that it's all in some way kind of theater for them, uh, and that everything that they do is theater as well, that there's no real investment. And look, not only with our own history, but even what happened in Iraq when we first got those individuals to vote, literally holding up the purple right. finger, <clears throat> it, going through threats of violence, rivers of blood. It's, it's worth doing because not just the gesture but because you change as you do it you own the responsibility these are individuals who don't really want responsibility but they want stuff and that's our problem that's what we have to overcome and in the meantime uh, there were with this election we saw people who felt for years that they didn't have a voice mm -hmm. they all stood up and they went to the polls mm -hmm. and they changed the direction of this country mm -hmm. and they found out that you know what they might have started protesting six years ago in the grassy you know somewhere in the grass park in a small town, but united, they had a voice and they, and they sent a message. Yeah, we have a participatory government, and that's one of the things I love about our country uh, the most. Uh, to Tammy's point, this is not just uh, focused on America. South Africans fought and, and died for the right to vote, and they revere it. I, I will talk about my generation because I think we have dropped the ball here. People talking about millennials. Why? Because you talked about building on things, things that generations before us have worked and sacrificed and died for. And I do think many in my generation have the attitude of, well, it's not where we should be, so I will opt out. We cannot afford to opt out. We have to take this as an opportunity. If you don't like it, vote or participate in any possible way to change it. But, but we cannot afford to rest on our laurels here. All right, ladies, thank you both very much. Appreciate thank it. You.